Eclectic Rock Talk, where you can now call in live at 715, sorry, area code 603-715-9690. Rock Talk is brought to you by GraniteRock.com and Coalition Coalition. Speak much lately? Uh, Speak much lately? In coordination with the Coalition of New Hampshire Taxpayers, visit them at CNHT. Dot org. I'd also like to remind you that you can listen to this and past programs on um, a lot of places. I said it earlier at the top of the show, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, TuneIn, and Stitcher Radio. YouTube and Ustream. YouTube, Ustream. We are all over the place. So, we uh, want to continue. i got to adjust my mic because every time I play with the board, I sound louder. <sighs> okay. There we go. So, uh, first hour, we got through a couple of topics on the list, and uh, we talked about a few more in the break. Let's see where we're going to go next. And uh, you're certainly welcome to uh, in- interject and change the direction of the show in the next segment. We have a guest coming in at 10 o'clock. Uh, Jen Coffey will be with us to talk about some um, Medicaid and Obamacare issues. And uh, State Rep Dan Itza will be in to talk to us about his new book called States Have Powers. That will be at 1030. So until then, you can call us at 603-715-9690. And uh, even if you don't call us, we're going to keep talking about stuff. Anyway, because that's what we do. Local, national, uh, international, supernatural, politics, supernatural. culture. Well, there are supernatural effects on the culture. Culture, politics, you name it, we'll talk about it. Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. Harold Ramis has passed away this he past did. week. He did, and something expected happened. You, you didn't read that? Which one? Uh, who was David Axelrod made it about Obama. Oh, no, I didn't read it about, uh, no, but, you know, Obama has to be in everything. That's right, famous guy dies, Obama, it's about Obama. Yes, you know, and, and that's the thing that... Uh, and, that just, uh, and this week, uh, Grand Canyon passed some uh, milestone in terms of years of being open, and there's a picture of, da 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 Obama! Uh, no, I mean, we definitely are a, a society where it's a... Uh, culture of celebrity uh some people get it instantly for one act like kim kardashian or if, if that's the the major player in the kardashian family but they're famous for being famous other people toil for years and only achieve famosity uh late in life or after they've actually done something really really cool that hardly anybody else can do and then there are people and i think uh, Obama's famous just for being a president. That should be enough. But, you know, we see that cult of Obamaism. I mean, all I can still remember is the first presidential election, and he's standing before those Doric styrofoam columns. I mean, was the state, stage set any better to make him look like a god on Mount Olympus? I think people should have been more interested in what the columns were made out of than what they represented. Oh, yeah, the green president. Styrofoam. <laughs> Yes. Mm, yes, which is exactly the sort of thing you wouldn't want in a landfill. God help you if you ever break one of them up, and uh, you'll get a lot of static, which I'm sure is what that, we seem to I'm be sure getting some from people, Obama. People have the autographed cop, you know, they have, I have a column from the thing in Colorado. <laughs> oh, no. my God. No, that will be in one of the presidential libraries, because, you know, now the latest <laughs> is most former presidents will have a presidential library. Now, for him, the the talk of the town is, well, maybe he'll have several. There's been a lot of speculation about where those ought to go. I could tell you a couple places. Oh, Rush Limbaugh had a list I heard in an ad, and I can't remember what it was, but it was really, really funny. Yeah, well, I'm sure Chicago and Hawaii are on the real list. Yeah, he, I, he had some international destinations as well. I don't remember specifically what they were. This is, you mean uh, like back in Kenya and led his brother who lives in the... Uh, the, the the mud hut basically uh, the shack earning fourteen dollars a year. Well, I think is, I think is Libya, gonna find, gonna help him out. I think Libya and Syria were on the list and uh, a few other places. Yeah, where he's made an impression, you know. Uh, that's it. Yes, places <laughs> where he's made an impression. <laughs> uh, okay, so, this is uh, a rat hole yeah. we could really. Go. Oh, oh, we could like we, like we like could. like like Egypt, where he claims to have been responsible for the Arab Spring, which didn't work out so well. When uh, and we all know that when the BBC uh, journalist was on the ground there during the Arab Spring uh, and asking what they thought of Obama's uh, efforts to uh, to help this, uh, they basically said uh, he's done nothing to help us. Don't ask about him. Yeah. All right. So uh, I don't know. How about Arizona? 
Arizona. Yes, the uh, the failure of the what a lot of people characterize as an anti-gay law, which I thought was rather stunning. Now, I briefly, very briefly, looked at the verbiage of the law. I mean, it's only four pages long. Two pages, actually. Two pages. There is no mention of gays or anything. No, there of isn't. It's, it, and here's the thing. I've been watching this for years, and it seems like the idea of sexual liberation, which is just something, is trumping the idea of the freedom of religious expression. Would say, you know, we talk a lot about guns and the Second Amendment here. It's a constitutional right to be able to bear and have arms for self defense and also defense against a tyrannical government. Here are people who want to say, I don't believe this is right. Now they are being coerced into supporting a celebration of something that they believe to be a sin. And I'm going to be honest. I believe that to be true. I don't mind, you know, like, like the florist that was sued and now it's going to the Supreme Court. And the, you know, one of the lower court judges said, you have to give up your religious rights as a cost of citizenship. And I'm sorry, the founders would be rolling in their graves because several of the original colonies were built on the idea that, that you can come here and worship the way that you want to. Well, it's not just the fact that the bill had nothing to do. The bill designed to protect people. Let me give you an example. Um, sweets by Melissa, I think it's called. Uh, the cakes. The, the sweet cakes. And sh this is a woman who lived right outside Portland in Oregon. Okay, She had a small business. She hired, she had a few employees. She made cupcakes, basically. Cakes, sweets, things like that. And cakes. And and for those of you who aren't familiar, the entire, most, most of the thousands and thousands of Muslims who live in Oregon live in Portland, or right in and around Portland, right? Portland's huge. There are bakeries. There are places to buy cakes everywhere. So a gay couple wants her to make something for their wedding, and she refuses. Now, she probably just said, look, I'm uncomfortable doing this. Could you go somewhere else? Instead of going to any of the other places they could have gone, including very likely a bakery owned by, say, a Muslim. Who might have stoned them. Who, right. We could hope. They <laughs> sue her, turn her into a media whipping girl, and she has to close her business and work out of her house. And she's lost that now, too. Has she? Yeah, because the business failed. They they went around and they did what we have seen before. They won't just attack that person, but they're going to go around and attacking family and friends and customers and what's important and here is that these people serve gays. People who come in and don't make a big deal out of it, they're probably gay. Who cares? I don't care. If you want to shop there, that's great. You know, they, they hire them. They serve them. But if you come in and specifically say, I want a cake for my gay wedding, and it violates your religious convictions, whether you're a Muslim, a Christian, a Jew, whatever it is, and there are thousands of options available to you, or even just dozens, there's a specific mission here, and that is to destroy these people and intimidate Christians, yes. Jews and Muslims. And we, and we mentioned that in the first segment. But I will look at this. You, you said something very important. Right now, they're picking on Christians. During Prop 8 back in California, they went in and really trashed a lot of Catholic churches. They went after the Mormon church. Again, traditional values. And, and by When's the way... The hold on. When's the last time you heard of one of these gay couples going into a Muslim establishment and demanding the same thing? They couldn't. And they couldn't because they won't. it's against their religion too, only their religion says you have to be stoned for it. Well, that that's true, but you know the Muslims, for whatever reason, and and we can watch it internationally and sometimes here in Dearbornistan, that if you don't behave the way that they demand that you do, you will pay a, a physical penalty for that. And, I and, think the, and the federal government just fined a trucking company for firing two Muslim drivers who refused to deliver alcohol. Yes. Now they said because of their religious convictions. You could have given them some other option. You didn't have to force them to do this and have them refuse, which they did. Then they fired them. And then the state came in. The government said, oh, no, 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 they have religious rights. Well, and, and there we see, again, the weaponization of the American federal government. All the, you, you look at um, Holder. He has basically said, his Department of Justice has said, you cannot... Uh, other, minorities cannot be racist because the whites are the majority. You can't be racist against whites. And that was said by J. Christian Adams, who was a Department of Justice lawyer for years and years and years. So they're taking a specific ideological stand, protecting certain minority or what they call um, 
oppressed minorities against everybody else. And of course, if you're white and Christian, you are the oppressor. That's the ideological slant that gives them permission to do what they're doing. And it's important to point out that the purpose of this bill was to reinforce the right of these people to not be sued into submission by these, and by anybody, really. It didn't necessarily have to be gays. It didn't have anything to do with gays. I mean, they're the ones who've been doing it, but if you were of any psychological construction of any kind and you went in and then you, this person didn't want to serve you for some religious reason, doesn't mean you didn't have to be gay, you would not necessarily just be able to sue them out of business. And that whole point was to protect the religious rights. If they had a leg legitimate religious objection to the service, whatever it was, that was the point of the law. Now, I heard somewhere that this law is just a mirror of a law that already exists in federal government that isn't enforced. So the law is already in place. Arizona yeah, and, and, was simply creating their own version to enforce it like they did with uh, immigration. Yes. Well, for, well, Freedom from Association says that you can meet with, mix with, or not meet with anybody that you choose. It also says that a business can refuse to serve you if they don't want to. Uh, not anymore. And that's the, and the problem uh, has uh, been... Uh, and that's because of the Civil Rights Act, because they wanted Correct. to make sure that you wouldn't discriminate against black people. Which, you know, I mean, in reality, good business is good business, and, meet, and greeting all comers is good business. And you know, the, the arguments made against this law were typically specious, and they said that it would drive business away from Arizona, that it would be bad for business. How can it be bad for business? It might be bad for one business to say, you know what, I'm not going to serve a particular type of uh, cake or, or a, uh, deal with a particular kind of people, but that's fine. That's an opportunity for other businesses, and, and that's what everybody misses when they denigrate free association. Uh, and this was a big topic back in the 60s when the Civil Rights Act was was coming about because the libertarians and the very constitutionalists said, free association, you're taking that constitutional right away from us. And you, then you start getting into the uh, governmental interest in this particular um you know, in this particular area. But since then, you've had so many other things. You know, you can't do it because of religious background or national origin or gender or this or that. By the time you look at it, the whole idea has, has become not as something that was a freedom uh, avowing type of act, but now it's a forceful act with the, the force of government, because that's all government is, is force to make you do something you may not want to do. It's basically said... We've basically legislated out of existence the idea of free association, except now in very, very small, specific areas. Like the formerly, the Boy Scouts did not want gay la leadership, and you know the screws got applied, and now they've changed that. And now they're what's happened now is that the number of boys and men in that organization is plummeting, and you're seeing alternatives that will now go ahead and continue using those same traditional values that the Boy Scouts used to have, mm -hmm. they're springing up all over the nation now because the Boy Scouts turned Neville Chamberlain. Yeah, they, ex exactly. And, yeah, he's a Brit, but he's one of the most infamous Brits of all time. You bet. And uh, he's, he's well used as an example. Are we going to talk uh, about another infamous Brit after the break? We might. You never know. We're going to take 60 uh, oh, seconds. Oh, yeah. And me, 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 <laughs> meanwhile, here is, the, here is the famous picture. There he is. Uh, happy happy 90, birthday, happy, Grand Canyon. Happy 95th birthday, uh, Grand Canyon. You don't hold a candle to me. Who's that guy in the foreground? All right. We'll be right it's back. It's an ass. It's the back of Barack Obama. <laughs> Steve McDonald here. Molly Shaheen, Senator Jean Shaheen's daughter, has a very expensive L.A. apartment where she lives and works. But for some strange reason, she voted here in New Hampshire. Elena Biden, niece to the man a heartbeat away from the presidency. Well, she never lived in New Hampshire at all, and she voted here and went back home. Hampshire Democrat Emma Roos invited her adult children to leave their homes in Virginia, Washington, D.C., to claim they lived in New Hampshire to vote last November, and they went back home. New Hampshire State Senator Martha Fuller Clark, vice chair of the New Hampshire Democrat State Party, she had a whole bunch of people who aren't from here living in her home, including a paid congressional staffer and an ACLU lawyer from Arkansas. They don't live here. They all claim to be claiming to live here just so they can vote here and then leave. That's not all the Democrats who showed up to steal your votes and then leave, but that'll get you started. This is Steve McDonald for Granite Rock, and we'll keep shining the light on them for you. Rock Talk. 
And we are back. I can't remember, I can't remember, I can't remember. Can't remember, can't remember, can't remember. Stuff. Stuff. Like quotes. Yeah. Oh, well, I have a quote. I have to fade the music out, though, first, because I can't read it and the other thing at the exact same time. Uh, I'm going to read your quote in a second. Let me give you the number again in case you really want to talk to us. 603-715-9690. We haven't been watching the phone, so if you were trying to call us... Uh-huh. Trying. We're going to get a, new, a device in. It'll be a strobe light. Trust me, if you call in, we will not miss it. Well, yeah. And all the people on the live stream will be going, Hey, idiots, pick up the phone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Sending us emails, I am. Um, all kinds of stuff. Yo, dummies, why lo- aren't you looking at the flashing light? So what's what's that number one more time for Chris P. Bacon? 603-715-9690. I lo- I lo- yeah, and let's just remember he's on Arizona time. I he thought he was w- in he- Florida. Is he? Arizona. He's in Arizona, maybe? Yeah. yeah. But he, he, he listens to us. Yeah, well, that's fine. It's a little earlier there, but not yeah. that early. So, uh, all yeah, right. So if we anybody, were if about... anybody can find the sagacious Sea Dog E Dog, that is almost worthy of a prize. He's missing. We were talking about the Arizona thing and how it didn't have anything to do with being gay, but had to do with protecting religious rights. But it reminded me of, of the problem. Uh, you know, we talked about the bondage sadomasochism thing, and we talk about the um, pushing, you know, uh, everybody to just do whatever the hell they feel like. And it reminded me of this quote that I posted by Theodore Dalrymple from Our Culture, What's Left of It. The idea that freedom is merely the ability to act upon one's whims is surely very thin and hardly begins to capture the complexities of human existence. A man whose appetites is his law strikes us not as liberated but enslaved. And once such narrowly conceived freedom is made the touchstone of public policy, a dissolution of society is bound to follow. No culture that makes pub- publicly sanctioned self-indulgence its highest good can long survive. A radical egotism is bound to ensue in which any limitations upon any personal behavior are experienced as infringements of basic rights. And that's really what we're talking about here. People are saying that, you know, you having a religious objection is an infringement on their basic right to do whatever the hell they want, which apparently includes putting you out of business. Yeah. Um, sorry, what was I? Uh, <laughs> sorry. Do you want me to read it again? No, 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 no. <laughs> the, 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 imp- the important thing, I think, is that, uh, you know, everybody's entitled to, um, you know, respect and equal treatment. You're not expe- es- entitled to make special demands. And when you cross the line into suing people uh, to promote your militant agenda, whatever that may be, I call them the gay stopo. Just yeah, exactly. Because that's a great term. Uh, it is. They, it's right up there with the feminazis, and they have a very similar attitude. It's very deliberate. Yes. Yeah, it, and as a special uh, class, and, and they're and they're Obama's stormtroopers too, because they're uh, relentlessly uh, socialist. And it's not unlike what the college students did um, in 2012 when they went with uh, the League of Women Voters and, and some other folks, and they went to court and said, we're out-of-state students, we demand our right to vote in New Hampshire, even though they could have voted absentee back home. Four students came forward, and Judge Lewis, of course, just signed the statement he was handed, basically destroying our domicile rules and ruining our election, and half of those students didn't even vote here. Yeah, and so it, also, uh, it was really not about voting at all. It was really just about tossing the apple cart. Yeah, And it also happens here in New Hampshire, even within the Republican Party. Now, take Tyler Deaton for a uh, an example. He is a gay activist within the Republican Party. And now with the Northeast Republican leadership coming up, um, oh, oh gosh. Did you derail your train of thought? Yes, I did. All of a sudden. Um, <laughs> yeah, presidential campaign or, uh, candidate that Mike Biondo was the campaign manager for. That would be Santorum. Santorum. And, and he, he was, uh, ho- hold on, yeah. he was invited earlier to come and speak mm-hmm. at the mm-hmm. uh, the Republican uh, shindig that's coming up. where you're going. Okay. Yeah. Tyler Deaton basically said, how dare you invite this conservative who is for traditional marriage? That is bigotry. So here you've got a Republican, ostensibly, basically bashing and trying to silence. Not so much that, not even a case of let me debate him. Let's, let, let me have more speech. He's basically saying, you have to disinvite him. 
in order to silence him so that his standpoint, his viewpoint, would not be heard within the Republican Party. You know, you, uh, and you Ty- Tyler Deaton said that? Tyler Deaton no, said that. No, I wrote that. a post about it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, and, you know, you say the gay Gestapo. I've heard uh, the gay mafia. Uh, I call them the militant gays. P- uh, Gaypatriot.com also wrote something about, uh, and I've, I've got it somewhere, um, but he is a, uh, a, a conservative. He said, this is absolutely craziness because the gays are turning into fascists. <clears throat> where it's their way or no way. It's not even the highway. You're not even being no, given it's, a it's, choice. It's, 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 their, it, it. It, it's, it's their way or, 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 or no way. Uh, it's in schools. It's in the offensive books. It's in the public demonstrations of uh, their weirdness. I mean, being gay isn't necessarily weird. Being, being gay and getting on with your life is something to be respected. Being gay in everybody else's face is offensive, because it's offensive behavior, not because it's being gay. And I think what you're seeing is all these laws popping up in all these states. Um, you know, one of my favorite phrases nowadays is, you have brought us upon yourselves. I think you're seeing a backlash of where gays have just gone too far with some of their pushiness and their uh, denouncements of anybody who disagrees with them and their actions to silence and destroy people. I've had personal experience here on Granite Rock with that, where they literally wanted to destroy my friend and make him destitute out on the street, and they publicly said in the comments, no apology is ever sufficient. In other words, they have one intent, and they are looking for people to ride against and basically they're, they're looking. Do they're, them they're looking for people to destroy. They, yeah. w- they want heads on pikes, and we ain't going to give it to them. And we'll put their heads on pikes very cheerfully uh, by ridiculing their approach. Yeah. In other um, words, they have become exactly what they have denounced. The important right. thing about uh, Deaton and his involvement with this GOP event, this Republican event, first off, he's the guy who took over Mo Baxley's job, basically. Yes. Uh, Mo Baxley was a left winger, and um, she ran a, a pro homosexual lifestyle. Um, non-profit, and Deaton came in, and the same company, ba- same New York City-based organization that funded her moved their money to him, and he came in as a Republican. Now, he's embarrassed by uh, Rick Santorum and all these other things, says he can't be in the conference. Well, what I did is I went and I, I put it in a post called Traditional Families. we got to defend them. And um, here's the part that really puts this paid. You can turn it off. Yeah, go ahead. Um, We believe that traditional families are the foundation of strong communities and that family life best nurtures love of country, faith in God, morality, and concern for others. This is part of the NHGOP platform. Traditional families is part of the platform. Therefore, for Deaton to suggest that a man who strongly supports traditional families should not under any conditions be at a Northeast Republican conference is very contrary, wouldn't you say? I, I absolutely would. And so, you know, don't call yourself a Republican. And, uh, you know, where I was going a little earlier before the last 15-minute break was, you know, in California when we had Prop 8, who was it that the white liberals attacked most viciously? It was the black Christians who dared to put their time, their money, and their churches behind Prop 8 to uh, say they wanted respect for traditional marriage. And... You know, this this is something that uh, we see over and over since the founding days of the progressives. They really are racist, and they will tell you over and over that they're not. They'll tell you that the Republicans are racist, and then by their actions, ye shall know them. Uh, they by their deeds, they always act racist. It's interesting too that you said that because you know we know that the the black community tends to vote Democrat. Um, we've had black conservatives on the show who. Or, um, who have been very outspoken about the interest in certain certain victim class communities, not just theirs, willing to trade certain rights and beliefs in exchange for something else from the government. You know, they're willing. Some some of these groups, like the black Christians, they're getting beat on by the gays, right? So the gays trump the black Christians. We we knew that, right? But the black Christians still go out as a majority and and tend to vote Democrat anyway for something else whatever that may be. So you notice that this, you know, these They're beginning smoke to re- screens and these illusions that are all interplaying. And it's a fight. 
It's the fight of the identity uh, politics group created by the Democrats. Right, and and, uh, and eventually there are going to be so many factions spite, fighting over a shrinking pot of spoils that it will all come crashing down. Uh, we just hope it doesn't bring the entire republic crashing down with it. Well, a socialism state is a selfish state because it does become a zero-sum uh, pie, and everybody's just fighting over the scraps, and that's that's the major problem that we see going down the road. Because when government gets too big, it will control everything, and that, by definition, is a socialist or a fascist state. I used to have a boss. I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, people, by definition, are not... Uh, are not going to share equally. People, by definition, will try to better themselves, better their family circumstances. They will strive for it. If the state makes it impossible to earn it, they will steal it, or they will try to grab the levers of power for themselves. And what you see in a state where supposedly everybody is equal, including the pigs that are more equal than others at the top, is is that they all climb over each other's backs to get the power and the, and the control and ultimately the money. Okay, next segment, Jen Coffey, writer, activist, mother, former state legislature. She wasn't a state legislature. She was a state legislator from New Hampshire. will be with us to uh, talk about health care and uh, other related issues. We had her on before about knives and guns, so this will be a change. Uh, my name is Steve McDonald. I'm here with Skip Murphy and Mike Rogers. We are Grok Talk, and we'll be right back after this. Steve McDonald here. You ever notice how Democrats like to create problems so they can then claim to solve them? Take Medicaid expansion, for example. Even if the federal government keeps its promise to New Hampshire to pay for most of it, it'll still cost New Hampshire taxpayers tens of millions of dollars more to provide inferior care and coverage to people who, for the most part, would never have needed it if Democrats hadn't reformed health care in the first place. That's right, that real expensive reform that doesn't care if it's only affordable if you act like you don't need insurance? Well, its number one claim to fame at this point is how many more people it forced onto Medicaid. And that's only because Obamacare kicks tens of millions of people off the plan they liked and were told they could keep but couldn't. So Medicaid expansion was always part of Obamacare for a reason. Democrats knew all along that the Affordable Care Act was unaffordable and they'd need to make Medicaid bigger and more expensive. So when people got their plan kicked to the health care curb, they could still sign up for something, even if it was something as crappy as Medicaid. This is Steve McDonald for Granite Rock, and we'll keep shining the light on him for you. Hi, this is Rich Gerard, host of Gerard at Large in the Morning, the Manchester area's only locally owned, locally operated, focused, and interested, riveting radio show heard live every Monday through Friday from 6 to 9 on 90.7 FM WLMW, New Hampshire Family Radio, and available 24-7 live or archived at GerardAtLarge.com. Be sure to tune in. This is the Coalition of New Hampshire Taxpayers. We're located at 8 North Main in Concord, New Hampshire. This is a repository for all things conservative and municipal. So if you have a problem in your town, your school, your budget committee, the right to know law, and now at the top of our list is voter fraud. Do you have a tip for us, some information for us, you want to join or help us out, cnht.org. Hi, this is Earl Hall from The Earl Hall Show, and you're listening to Grok Talk. Grok Talk. 